Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. Today I want to explore some spacers and corner cutters for book binding because I want to see if they can save me some time. When you do a lot of book binding, you tend to measure out the same things over and over again and it can get really repetitive and sometimes templated tools can save you some time. So I want to try these out. While doing research on these tools, I found a lot of shops make their own version of these tools with 3D printing and cutting acrylic, metal. So there's a lot of resources out there and I will put a list of all the links I found great Etsy shops in the description. And if there are shops that you like, let me know in the comments because I want to continue adding to this list. So it's a resource for everybody that comes to this video. A spacer is a tool that will measure out the hinge width of a book. This is the hinge of a book. Helps your book open easily. I used to call this with the gap width in my earlier videos and then I decided to educate myself and I found out it's called the hinge width. So that's what I'm calling it now. We live and we learn. But that's basically what it does. It measures the hinge area of your book when you are making your cover. They can also be used for box making or cartonage, but for the most part, I'm exploring them for book binding. And there are a lot of good shops that I found on Etsy. These are a few of my favorite. Colorway Arts has a lot of these tools, plus more supplies and other tools for book binding and cartonage. And she actually sent me a few of these tools to try a while ago. I just never got around to using them because they were a different size than I would use for my book binding projects but I think they are a really good quality. They're acrylic, they're really rigid, and the measurement is etched into the spacers. iBookbinding is a really good resource for bookbinding online, but they also have a shop and he makes his own tools out of 3D printing. On this listing, you can order different sizes, different lengths, you can order sets of spacers. Also, he makes an interesting design where the spacer has feet on the bottom. There is a version that has a little notch that will hold the spine of your book. So the idea of the little notch is that your chipboard pieces will stay aligned on the bottom while you glue them to your cover material. El Libro Rojo is another good shop. She has a lot of materials and tools, also 3D printed. She has a spacer set that also comes with corner cutters. You can order a set of different sizes. These also have those little feet. These are just a few of my favorites, but I know there's a lot of other shops out there and there's different shops based in other countries. So definitely check out the links in the description to shop around to find the best shipping that would work for you. I noticed a lot of these independent shops will update the design of their tools. So whatever I'm showing you here might be the outdated version. So definitely check out their shop to see the most latest version of their tools. I do really like the quality of these from Colorway Arts. However, they just weren't in the size that I needed. And so being a DIYer, I wanted to see if there's a way I could actually make my own spacers but without a 3D printer or an acrylic cutter because I don't have any of those tools. So I'm going to make my own out of chipboard because that was my first idea. I have that material on hand. Here's how I calculate my hinge width. I add two of the board pieces together for the board thickness, the spine and the front cover. And then I calculate how thick the cover material is. Do I need to add an extra millimeter to that or not? And then I add a fourth of an inch on top of that. When it comes to case bound books, three eighths of an inch is my most commonly used width for that hinge space. And I tend to use that on a lot of my projects, mostly because I use the same width of board and the same cover material over and over again. So three eighths is my go-to. I also noticed that's a very common hinge width on commercially produced or manufactured books. When I've taken them apart, I've noticed the hinge width is about 3 8 So I think that's what I want my DIY spacer measurement to be. And when it comes to other book bindings, if the book has a thin spine or no cover material, or it's a specialty binding, I usually use a fourth of an inch or less on the hinge width. 
I know there's going to be some experts in the comments, but I just want to say that the hinge measurement can vary depending on your preference and your experience of how you like your book to open. Finding what you like for the hinge width can be just a trial and error. The more you practice, the more you figure out what you like. So just remember, it's just bookbinding. It doesn't have to be rocket science and measurements don't always have to be exact when you're making things by hand. Again, since my go-to measurement is usually 3 8 of an inch wide, I'm cutting them to that size and making them about a foot tall. I want to put some kind of coating on these because I imagine some glue is going to get on them as I'm using them and I want to be able to clean them off a little bit. So I'm sanding them to prep them for some spray paint. I put a few coats of glossy yellow spray paint on them and when they were dry, they came out okay. I think these came out better than I expected. Another idea I had was cutting these out of thick polyvinyl material like a placemat or a polyvinyl folder. So I tried that out but I found that they were a little bit too flimsy, which might not be ideal when you're trying to keep your board pieces straight. And since the material isn't as thick, they might get lost underneath the board. Another idea was using sticky notes. I have these from Muji that happen to be 3 8 of an inch or a centimeter wide. So those could mark out the space. This is temporary because you couldn't really use these over and over again but it is an idea if you need something really quick. Okay, let's try out my new DIY spacers. I have some board pieces cut out already and I'm gluing them on top of a cardstock paper. I think it's good that they're about the same height as the board so there's some thickness there and they won't get lost underneath the board. And then I'm using my drafting triangle underneath everything to make it all flush. Gluing the first cover down. And then the spine piece. And already I'm noticing that some glue is getting on the spacers. And then gluing the other cover. I do think if these were made out of an acrylic, they would be easier to wipe, like my drafting triangle. The glue was really easy to wipe off that. But when it comes to a spray painted cardboard or board material, it wipes off, but I can imagine this getting a little dirty over time and wearing off. Spacers can also be used to measure and cut out the material around your cover for that border edge, but if you're cutting along a DIY spacer, I would definitely recommend it being acrylic or metal because if you cut into spray painted chipboard, that's just gonna cut right through it. I did find a ruler that was about an inch wide that worked perfectly because I usually have about three fourths of an inch to an inch space that I like to cut out. So I think I'll be using this ruler more in the future just because it's so skinny and convenient to cut around. For the corner cutters, I have a couple to try already because these kind people sent them to me a couple years ago, so thank you by the way. And I wanted to see if I can integrate them into my projects and if they speed up the process of bookbinding. This first one I have is from Colorway Arts. It's made out of metal, which I think would be good to cut against. It wouldn't wear down. She also has newer versions of this, so again, check out these shops to see the latest version of these tools. This next one was sent to me from This Black Witch and she has an Etsy shop with 3D printed things and this is made out of biodegradable plastic by the way, which is cool. It has texture printed on the bottom so it won't slide around and I do like that it has a finger guard for the accident prone such as myself. So first trying out the metal corner cutter and I did notice that my border was a little bit too large for it but it can still work. And again, she does make a larger version of this. 
it was really easy to cut along and it does leave that extra space on the tip of the corners which is what you want so that the very tip of the corner of the board won't be exposed and you'll have enough material to fold over it. Then trying out the other one, it works just as well but it also protects my fingers and it also leaves that extra space on the tip. I think because I have years of experience cutting corners on my covers that I automatically know to leave a little gap on that edge and I just trim them with scissors. I've done that for so long that I think that's actually faster for me to do than to use a corner cutter. But I do think these would be really helpful for beginners and maybe if you are really detail oriented and you want your corners cut at that exact angle or if you're someone who prefers cutting with a blade or a knife and not scissors and you want that angle to be exact, these are great to cut against. Also, after filming this, I did find a DIY version of a corner cutter, so if you want to learn how to make your own corner cutter, I will put that tutorial in the description below. I do think the spacers made it easier to measure out on the spine hinge instead of just measuring out with my ruler, and even if I don't want to keep them in the pieces while I'm gluing them down, I could just trace them and make it a template which is still faster than measuring it out on both sides, if that makes sense. I'll mostly just be using these for my case-bound projects, and just remember there are multiple ways to bind a book, so don't feel obligated to buy any of these tools. If anything, I hope this video inspires you to DIY your own version, or just to see what's out there for you to try. Thanks for joining me in this exploration of bookbinding tools, and if you want to see more videos like this where I explore other tools, let me know in the comments below. Again, all of the links to the shops I mentioned will be in the description and I will keep updating that list as more comments come in just to have a resource for everybody to see. A big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members for helping me make more content like this that is free for the public to watch on YouTube. And if you're interested in supporting more videos where we nerd out about bookbinding, I will put those links in the description. Another way you can support this channel is by hitting that subscribe button and then hitting the bell right next to it so you can get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to check out more videos where I'm exploring bookbinding supplies, substitutes, and tips, I will put a whole playlist right here. Again, all the links will be down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!